You're listening to the Co-Creator Network. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Good afternoon. Welcome to Why Shamanism Now, a practical path to authenticity with your host, Christina Pratt, director of the Last Mask Center for Shamanic Healing. She's talking about how shamanic skills can bring us to physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being, especially when nothing else can. Now, here's your host, Christina Pratt. Welcome, everyone, to Why Shamanism Now. This is your host, Christina Pratt, and today I would like to call in the ancestors to join us. I call out to all of those who are good, who bring what is good and true and beautiful into our lines to come be with us here today. It is their dreaming that brought us here onto the face of this planet, and we give thanks to them for their belief and their hope about the future. We call out to those uh, to gather around us here today that experienced initiation in their lives, initiation from childhood to adulthood. And then in their adulthood, into their calling, whatever that might have been, that allowed them to express from their soul their true gift they had to bring to the world. So we call out to these ancestors, for those who are gathered here today, now on this uh, live call, live show, but also to all of those who will listen to this show at any time, and whenever they choose to download it or listen online, we call out to all of you across time and space, to all of your ancestors, to be with us here today to gather around us that we might do what is meaningful, that which has heart and that which has purpose and that which will help those who are living here today in the present. We call out to the earth below, the greatest ancestor, the oldest, the deepest ancestor for all of those who are here in physical form and we give thanks to the earth for the wonder of her dreaming that brought life as we know it to the face of this planet. We give thanks for home, for connection, for interconnectedness, for oneness with all things, and for belonging. We give thanks to the earth for this place and for the miracle of life, and may we take what we hear here, here, here today forward in our lives that we may be part of that miracle. And from our place here on the earth with the ancestors gathered round, we reach up from our hearts and our minds up to the highest power of the universe, all the way up into the very heart of the cosmos. And we call out to that highest energy above, we call that energy down, bringing in blessings, bringing in protection, bringing in guidance, bringing in generosity and benevolence, calling in all of these energies that are present in the realm above, bringing in the sky here to meet the energy of the earth that the big love between these two huge energies may exist within us here today. And as we feel that connection of earth and sky within us, held well by the ancestors, may we each call out to our heart to be present here today and to open the heart so the heart can do its job to draw up the energies of the belly that carry the passions of why you are here and merge those energies with the clarity of the mind and the inspiration that you might know how to bring your own unique genius into the world in this life and may you take one step forward in that here today so may what needs to be said be said and what needs to be heard be heard and may these proceedings be good for all living things so i'm in so much gratitude today just for co-creator network and for a wonderful home here for the show i give thanks to all of the people of last mask community who have donated so generously that we could make this transition to co-creator and keep the show on the air. And I want to give a special thanks to our very first listener who donated. So I give thanks to Mark for donating to the show. And for those of you who are listening and have been moved by the show, you are welcome to donate as well if you choose to. All you need to do is go to the website, whyshamanismnow.com. No question mark, just whyshamanismnow.com. Click on the support button and feel free to donate any amount. Every single dollar truly helps us to keep the show on the air and to keep the INE energies flowing. Um, you can also access other shows on the site as well as on the co-creator site. It's co-creatornetwork.com as well as iTunes. And you all know how to find iTunes. So you can just download these shows all over the place and um, – Please do share them with your friends. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest today, Desiree DeMars. Welcome, Desiree. Dana. Welcome. Thank so, you. 
Desiree is our first guest on a series of speaking with different practitioners, men and women, who have very, all have very, very different practices. And we're just discussing with them their personal experiences with initiation. And it is my hope in doing so, looking at a really wide range of transformation and seeing how, how initiations function to transform people, that we can begin to remember collectively what a true initiation from childhood to adulthood means so that we as a culture could begin to move towards greater mass spiritual adulthood and in doing that perhaps make better quality decisions for all living things. So this is my scheme. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful one. <laughs> so, um, so Desiree is co-founder of the Center of Shamanic Healing in the San Francisco Bay Area at the moment – However, she is planning to move in July to Asheville, North Carolina. So the most important thing is to reach her no matter where she is on the planet. You can reach Desiree yeah. at Desiree DeMars at Yahoo.com. And I'll spell that. So it's D-E-S-I-R-E-E, D-E-M-A-R-S at Yahoo.com. Um, and if you are interested because you are in the San Francisco Bay Area, um, that website is Center for Shamanic Healing as one word, dot com. So now that you're all organized on in cyberspace, let's get organized here in real space. So usually, Desiree, at this stage of a show with a guest, I ask them to share their truly pivotal moments that have made them the person that they are today so that we know why we should bother listen to them. Um, but of course, since the whole show is about that topic, maybe we should start somewhere more ordinary. Um, so I was wondering if you would just share kind of like a normal – uh, quote unquote normal day in the healing practice life of Desiree DeMar. So people kind of get a sense of, you know, the kind of practitioner that you are. So just kind of make up a, an ordinary day with Desiree. <laughs> um, well, let's see, ordinary day. Um, well, I would say ordinary. What's great about the ordinary day is that it's not ever the same. And, um, and of course, that's because of the people that come. Um, on this journey, I believe, to explore some of the things that you mentioned um, about evolving, um, healing, um, exploring who they truly are uh, makes my life pretty interesting because it's, it's <laughs> actually <never> the same. <laughs> and it's fascinating to me. In fact, um, I think what's wonderful about it is it helps me to continue to grow and expand in ways that I never would have imagined because um, it creates the opportunity for me to look at myself differently. You know, it gives me the opportunity to, um, you know, shift my perceptions of beliefs that I've had in that. So, I'm, I, you know, as far as just the the activities, you know, I. I participate with a group here in Oakland and have everywhere, actually everywhere I've lived. I lived for many years in Chicago and had a practice there. And, um, you know, we have regular drum circles. Um, we create ceremony to honor ancestors, to honor nature and the seasons, um, or to support one another, ourselves, you know, those of us in our personal spiritual community, and then also our greater community. And um, so I'm involved, you know, on all levels doing things um, with community or individuals who are coming um, for personal, you know, support and community. Um, so, and I, you know, my practice, of course, like many shamanic practitioners, I'm sure has evolved through the years, um, beginning with my own personal experiences of understanding, um, you know, my own, my own spiritual growth and pursuing, you know, one step at a time, you know, what's kind of added on to those beginning experiences and evolved to what it is now. I, I feel like, you know, traveling around the world, in fact, that's how we met. And here I am today. I don't know if I'd be here today if I hadn't gone on this um, adventure or this journey to Nepal and uh, we reconnected. Um, through your show now. So, um, you know, I think, uh, my practice though, it's probably hard uh, to put a name on it or, you know, give you an exact description mm -hmm. because I, I feel I really honor, you know, whatever 
communication and, uh, and guidance I get through my own spiritual mm -hmm. uh, connections. So it's probably, <laughs> um, you know, a little bit of a lot of different things. And I've, it's, you know, emerged into becoming, you know, a, a, just a deeper expression of myself through all mm -hmm. these different experiences that I've had throughout my life. So if you reflect back on your life and all of the travel and all the experiences, are, are, there, are there particular moments, or not necessarily moments, but experiences mm -hmm. that stand out as, these, as an experience or just mm -hmm. a couple experiences that were just at a level above everything else in terms of truly transforming you into the person that you are today? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say the common denominator, if I look back, is really, um, for me personally, it seems to be uh, experiences or um, things in nature, some aspect mm -hmm. of nature. Um, that's been my most powerful teacher. When I am, you know, in a place where I'm out in nature and I'm, you know, connecting with spirit I feel uh, amazing, you know, amazing things have happened to me um, through either creatures, animals, the weather, um, things like that. Um, you know, and often people that are there with me, obviously, you know, we, we can come be together and co-create an experience with intention, which can also then amplify. I think that's something I know that you had mentioned um, possibly wanting to explore because I was, you know, I had said something earlier about, um, I believe the fact is that, you know, there are initiatory experiences or opportunities there for us all the time. Mm -hmm. but, the, the, but what we really, um, what I noticed is, you know, there has to be the intention there, or at least the open, the openness, the receptivity, you know, the heart uh, needs to be open to, um, experiencing uh, that kind of guidance, you know, that kind of information. Yeah, um, and you, you also mentioned a kind of consciousness in reflecting, because I, I know that I've, I've mentioned before on the show, for example, I have clients who don't choose to journey themselves, but they do actually mm -hmm. get quite a bit of shamanic healing. But what I mm -hmm. notice over time is regardless of their... Uh, choice to journey and work with their helping spirits or not, their life chooses to work with them that way. <laughs> and so what yes. happens is they actually do start having these experience in life, experiences in life where I look at them and I see, okay, that was an initiation trying to happen. But because the person brings this different, a non-shamanic perspective to it, they see it as a good or a bad experience and try to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and consequently, yeah. it doesn't really run its course, and they end up just being frustrating and wondering why that project blew up or that relationship blew up instead of mm -hmm. being able to recognize, oh, that was a potential ego death, and I could participate, I could have mm -hmm. intention and consciousness about it. But but so I've watched this in people and think, you know, life. I agree, life does keep trying <laughs> to mm -hmm. initiate us. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh huh. It's like as if life is actually one gigantic game board or something, you know, of like divination. It's, um, I feel that way sometimes. It's kind of like, you know, you're walking along and, you know, you can pass certain things, you end up in certain spots, and then these opportunities are there. But if you are, if you do not give yourself the opportunity to reflect on, you know, a, how, what those things mean to you personally, because of course, you know, they have a larger definition, but, you know, uh, we all have filters. We all have these aspects of who, you know, what makes us unique and uh, unique to the path that we're on. I know you talked um, in your last show about like life purpose. You know, we all have a specific purpose. And so with that filter of purpose, let's say, you know, we'll see things differently and the connections will look differently, the configurations or, you know, um, the metaphors that those uh, experiences bring to us will be very different from one person to the next. But I agree that, you know, they can definitely, um, they may mean the same thing. You know, they're, they're actually opportunities for uh, deeper, deeper uh, levels or just deep, deeper initiatory kinds of experiences. They definitely are happening all the time. 
Um, and I find that too. I find that just recently that I noticed that with um, different clients of mine that, um, you know, if they're sharing an experience that's, say, dramatic or very traumatic for them, or it's something that's really puzzling them or bothering them, if they are looking at it with the intention of, you know, even just asking why, as simple as like, you know, why is this happening to me? Or why does this pattern keep showing up in my life? You know, there's an opening for finding deeper meaning in what happens next. And I think maybe the part of the role of the shaman is to help somebody see that, you know, that um, these these things that are happening truly are metaphors for this this bigger journey that we're all on, actually, it, just living as a human being, is that we're going to someday face our our death of this physical body. And, you know, the challenge is to see, like, who 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 is that on, beneath all this? What really exists beneath this physical form? And what has created this life force, this energy here that we're expressing ourselves through? And these experiences are really the opportunity to... Um, you know, find, I think, deeper meaning for those, for those. Well, uh, and I, yeah, and I also think in a, in this, in this particular time, and, and I say this mm-hmm. with the complete belief, we all chose to be here now. Yes. But mm-hmm. in this particular time, th- there seems to be a, pr- in America at least, there seems to be a very high distraction level from exactly yeah. what you're just talking about, which is, you know, what is the yeah. true nature of my soul and why am I here? There seems to be, you know, yeah. it's a time of enormous distraction. And so, you know, what I see in each of these initiatory moments, as, as you were saying, is that possibility for the, the paradigm of how you see yourself in the world shifting if you yeah. actually engage with it in that way. But what I see um, often is where people don't choose to engage with it that way, there's no paradigm shift. If there's no paradigm shift, there's no real transformation. Um, yes. And that's, you know, and that's the place where um, I think that, you know, you're, you're speaking really beautifully about the fact that this is a participatory experience. It's not mm-hmm. that it happens to us. I mean, it does happen to absolutely, us. But, absolutely. Absolutely. But it doesn't matter that it happened to us if we're not paying attention. And if we don't... That- yeah. Learn how to pay attention as mm-hmm. we mature through life, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think that's one of the first things, uh, especially if people come for shamanic um, sessions. I feel like uh, it's an absolute necessity to express the fact that, you know, like people come often and they think, oh, well, I'm just going to get healed or, you know, they're going to do something to me and boom, you know, oh, it'll all be better or it's going to change. And, I always forewarn them that it's like, okay, you know, this is actually, um, you know, like the, your introduction, that you're going to get homework. You know, there's homework right. to do. And I'm not the one that's going to actually do anything other than, you know, I can be this container. I can, um, you know, reflect some wisdom here for you that comes through, you know, my spirit guides or something I may see or hear through them. But ultimately, if there's no action taken, on the participants' behalf, you know, for, if they're not participating fully, you know, or they'll just get what they, they get, how much they put into it. And um, I think sometimes I'm finding that most recently, most people are very open to that, very willing. I mean, that's why they're coming in the first place. I think it may be, you know, this may touch on what you're trying to say is that, you know, um, Maybe we, you know, many people never had a teacher or we never had um, anybody, you know, walking that path before us to really, um, you know, have as a role model or have as an example in their life. Because surely, like you said, I mean, there is so much distraction. I mean, we are like there is just information overload and you can take in all kinds of information these days in different ways. But um if you're not actually, you know, using these filters within yourself somehow to, uh, you know, create your own story to, to, to make meaning so that you can take action towards um, specific purposes that you have or specific goals that you have. Um, yeah, it just ends up being it's just more information and you can just spin yeah. your wheels yeah. and go around and around and with all kinds of information and never really move forward. 
I had a funny version of that. I had a friend in Seattle who used to take me to the movies all the time because he thought it was so funny that I always saw a different movie than everybody else. <laughs> Because my filters were so purely shamanic that I would interpret the whole movie through that lens. And he always found it so fascinating what I thought the movie was actually about. (laughs) Because I always saw my own movie. Um, And So Desiree, let's circle back around, though, to what you said about your experiences in nature. Because I like to give listeners a sense of scope. Because your experiences in nature are, you know, we're not talking about a walk in the park here. (laughs) <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Although they can be, I mean, it can be as simple as that, but you're right. I mean, I feel like, um, I personally I mean, have always been really interested in other cultures. Um, uh, you know, really getting deeply into just being in nature. And I, I think some of my first, I, I just, I used to call them God experiences, you know, we're just, I used to canoe every summer go on these two week trips where you just took your backpack um, up into uh, uh, this area in Atticoke in Ontario. And um, it was called the Quetico. So, you know, there's no planes, no boats, whatever. And you just, whatever you bring in, you bring out. And I have to say, you know, live, uh, you know, having those experiences when I was very young, um, I was a teenager at the time. I, I remember having really profound experiences by being around animals in their natural environment. Um, I, this man who I, who was a, had this pro- a program there where he took kids up um, for these two week experiences. I mean, he had a, a wolf as, as his pet, you know, so that was pretty eye opening for me. You know, the first time I went up there just like, Oh my God, you know, this person has um, pretty much this wild animal who's, who he's connected to, you know, I had an actual I got to experience having a person in my life who was, you know, communing with this very different creature, you know, than I'd ever seen anybody have and was communicating with him and had, um, you know, a relationship with him. And then so being with him and just, you know, uh, he used to record sounds for slideshows. He went around and presented, um, he traveled the world actually and was quite an ecologist um, in the 60s. And you know, he would record live sounds of the animals and then do uh, photos and a slideshow. And that was pretty, that was before all this, you know, PowerPoint kind of stuff. So he was really cutting edge. And I just remember being with him and he was out there howling to the wolves one night. And I thought, oh, this guy's crazy. And then all of a sudden this pack of wolves was there. And I mean, I get goosebumps now just thinking about it. Um, But, you know, to be face to face with, um, you know, and in immersed in that kind of experience, I feel like was the opening for me. And when I just sat with that and asked myself, you know, what is this teaching me? What is, you know, why am I having this experience? Why did I end up here? Um, you know, the information I got really uh, back even then was, you know, this is all about relationship and mm-hmm. your relationship to the earth, you know, how you're being with the earth, how you're being with other creatures, how you're being with other people. And, um, and I think that kind of was the springboard for me to, um, you know, it was so uh, opening, so expansive for me uh, on so many levels that I feel like, you know, I had a deep understanding of um, how powerful animals and creatures, you know, and nature um, can be. And so throughout travels that I've taken through, I had many practiced yoga for many years and taught yoga for many, many years and um, exploring different parts of the world on yoga retreats and that I've had, I guess I've shared with you some of those, you know, I've, uh, I was actually exploring, um, Mexico, parts of Mexico with some friends and, um, was stung by a scorpion. And, you know, I think again, I got, you know, the reflection of that for me was that, okay, here I am out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, something really intense has just happened to me you know, what are my options? You know, I'm not near a hospital. I don't know anybody. Um, I'm literally like out in the jungle. And I think, you know, when you're faced with a situation like that, often I know uh, as I did, you know, it was like, well, now I get the opportunity to really practice, you know, okay, healer, heal thyself, you know, or, you know, what is real here? And what, you know, what can I actually, how can I actually engage in this information and this power that I that I've been exploring how can I make this real in my life so that it benefits me in some way and um, 
again, I feel like just having had that experience with the scorpion, that too, I felt like I experienced actually, I had a lot of physical transformation um, because it was very numbing. I think my hand and my arm was numb for quite a while. And the locals told me, oh my gosh, you know, you should have been paralyzed. But I had been actually uh, eating raw foods for a couple of years and uh, practicing yoga quite intently and really kind of on the beginning of my shamanic exploration. And um, I feel like I, again, have this really expansive experience um, internally on an emotional, mental level of unity, you know, and and this connection to, if you want to call it like a God kind of um, God experience. So um, I feel like a pattern started to emerge as I've explored and traveled um, with animals, definitely, and, in, and experiences in nature. So one of the things that you said was um, that they ask us to face our deepest fears in order to strengthen us for life experiences mm-hmm. to come. Um, mm-hmm. They also become the medicine that heals us as we process the information and the symbolism they embody. Yes. <laughs> so I want to bring everybody back to something she said because it was right in the middle of the story and I didn't want to interrupt but it's really critical for us to understand what what we're really talking about is here's a grown woman who is still asking that three-year-old question, but why? And I think that, that basically there's people in life that grow out of that because everyone tells them to stop it. And then there's the rest of us who don't. <laughs> and I think those people who continue to say, but, but why? What, why is this happening? What does this mean? What, what is the, that, that refusal to quit asking why about our life is one of the reasons that, well, someone like Desiree has these kinds of experiences where everybody else is just having a yoga retreat and she's off here having an initiation by Scorpion. I mean, because mm-hmm. of the willingness and just the natural reaction to ask why, what is – because there is always something going on under the surface, mm-hmm. and things are never what they appear to be. But if we don't ask why, we don't find out. Yeah, absolutely. I think then, and there's almost an, there's another piece to that, too. It's like, yeah, you have to be willing to ask the question, and then you have to be willing to receive an answer. And then, you know, and that actually has probably multiple parts to it, too, because you may hear something, you know, I'm sure often many of us, you know, something happens to us and then we go, wow, that was amazing. And then you, you get a little glimpse of a deeper meaning, you know, what that, how that happened and why that happened. And then you have to really honor that inner wisdom within yourself and say, you know, get really, I think, you know, it's almost like you have to get, um, the nitty gritty of that and kind of say, Oh, what, what truth does that really touch in me? Because we all have our own stories, right? We're all going to express, um, you know, or like you've talked about the movie theater experiences, like we can sit there and see the same thing, but we're going to see, see it very differently than the next person, depending on, you know, our perspective. So I think you start, as you put that together, if that's truly your intention, what you see is, you know, there's this deeper truth for you personally, and then you see how that is connected to this bigger purpose or, you know, this larger picture maybe to on a global level or community or global level. Um, and, I, and I think that there's a piece that, that you're sort of implying in what you're saying, but I think that it's important. So we ask why, and then there's that willingness to receive an answer and then mm-hmm. not just sort of jump off the uh, meditation cushion at that point and go, oh, I got an answer, you know, divine revelation. Mm-hmm. But then mm-hmm. just say, okay, what does that mean for me in my life? And then I yes. feel that there's a step that is the, really the most challenging, which is to let that truth transform mm-hmm. us. Absolutely, which I just got chills when you say that because I, I feel like, I mean, it sounds kind of really simple to say, but it's like then how am I actually going to manifest something with that or take some action? You know, that is, seems to be really challenging. It's like how do I express this even further in my life how do i you know continue to expand and move and deepen that experience in my life so that i think that's what you're saying so that it actually creates an experience of transformation so that it actually changes something within me Mm -hmm. Uh, and then is shown you know is expressed outwardly so that others 
you know, so that you're playing this bigger part, you know, you're participating in your role as, um, I loved what you said, I think when you were talking in your show about, um, you know, like purpose is like, we all came here to do something really important or we wouldn't have been here if we wouldn't be here in the first place. And I mean, I think that's, uh, you know, that that's our challenge, um, uh, globally right now is, you know, to, to take, you know, some really strong, powerful, you know, put that power into action, put that information, that energy into action so that it's really benefiting, you know, uh, not just us as an individual, but all those around us, you know, the, as, as far as you can, you know, out to the planet, um, the universe. And I think that can be really challenging. I think those of us who are having these kinds of initiatory experiences or, you know, on a spiritual path of some sort right now, you know, um, if we feel we're having this transformation into this luminous kind of, you know, more expanded state of awareness or consciousness, um, it's, I think that's our challenge. You know, how do we, how do we manifest that in the world? You know, how does it show up in the world so that we're creating this kind of new reality that we want or this new level of consciousness or interconnectedness with all things. Mm -hmm. Um, You, you uh, reminded me of something that Alberto said, Alberto Villalodo, for those of you who don't know Alberto um, said about uh, the deepest of initiations that they are death rites. And that's, I think for us to truly get to a level of initiation that there does need to be that, death of the old person and and the yeah. the birth of the new person that it is a death right there's a um a form in my in my qigong practice um and the form the the movements through the form are accept the, first there's the acceptance of yourself as you are this, this whole form is about destiny so it's acceptance of yourself as you are and the very next move is the acceptance that now you must die <laughs> To even mm-hmm. see your destiny. <laughs> and, you know, it's like acceptance of who you are and now you must die. It's like one, two, now three, moving on. And then the <laughs> next move is to extend out of time and space to, uh-huh. to connect with yourself in, in the future, in, in, the, in the full manifestation of your destiny. That's mm-hmm. step three. And then step four is to draw the energy of that destiny back very much like a blessing. And to and mm-hmm. to cover yourself in it, like when you're smudging with um, sage smoke or tobacco mm-hmm. smoke or something, that mm-hmm. you you bas- basically bathe yourself here in present time in your destiny, and mm-hmm. then you accept yourself as you are. It's just, mm-hmm. and I just I love that because it reminds me if I'm going to get to my destiny, I can't be screwing around here. It's acceptance and death. <laughs> and and yeah. like you were saying, yeah. you know, back to Bruce Lipton's book, that's what the cells are doing. They're either living yes. or dying. We're either in love or fear that that so much of today is distracted into this in-between space that yes. has no meaning other yes. than what we give to it. And we don't understand that that mm-hmm. power of giving meaning to things is meant to be being used as you're talking about it, which is mm-hmm. to give meaning to your experiences in life so that you can find out who you are and why you're here and reveal that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it makes me think of, oh, another experience that I had. I was exploring at one time um, holotrophic breath work and using that in, as part of my practice and doing some training. And in my own, it was an initiatory experience. I was laying on the beach. A practitioner was at my head and we were running through the breath work. And, you know, I was, you know, I, you know, I can't even, exp- I'm getting, you know, chills just thinking about it again, too, where, you know, my whole body was feeling expansive, and I was focusing on my breath and the intention of the session, and all of a sudden, I remember I was laying on the sand, and I felt something really strange kind of slithering <laughs> alongside my body, and, um, you know, I was still breathing and focusing, I thought, what is this, you know, I, and then all of a sudden, I had this acute awareness that the person who was sitting at my head was all of a sudden just wasn't there. And I thought, okay, you know, part of me, my brain clicked in and said, like, do I get up and look? Do I break this kind of energy flow that's happening? Or do I just trust it and go with it? And I opened my eyes and I looked up and the person was at, was gone. <laughs> and I couldn't figure out what had happened. And then I looked to my side where I'd felt this kind of movement in the sand and this huge snake, probably like as long as I was, 
was like slithering past me and I you know sat up because I was kind of half in a trance and I just thought oh my god you know this is really wild you know why again like why is this happening and I realized the person was laying there and she must or who was sitting next to me was so freaked out she got up and moved but then didn't say anything to me and you know I wondered for a time after that you know what was that all about other than okay you know the symbolism of the snake and I was breathing and Holotrophic breath work, you know, is, um, of course, oftentimes bringing you to into a rebirthing experience. Um, I thought about that later, and I thought, you know, it's um, it also challenges in the way in a way challenges us these types of experience. I thought, okay, this was uh, an experience for me to look at what I believed about not only mm, being able to go back or to experience a remembering of who I was, but to remember or to bring to consciousness my own power in that, you know, I truly am the one here creating these experiences. You know, it's up to me because I thought, well, you know, here this person was supposed to be my kind of guide or guardian and she had taken off, you know, and I thought, okay, here I am. This is truly an expression or, you know, a story about, okay, what do you do? I mean, truly you have to be, it's just you, you know, when it it comes down to it, it's you and um, your truth, you're engaging in your power, your wisdom and making this, I don't know, whatever you choose, you know, I mean, I think that's kind of, um, I hope that that that's what people find too through, their shamanic healing processes or these initiations is that that empowers them to see that, you know, they're the one in charge here. You know, they're the one walking on this path and they, they are reclaiming, you know, the greatness of who they are just on a, on this pure energetic level. So, um, these stories are really great. Uh, is there any other uh, story of your own initiation experiences that you just think was really um, absolutely critical in transforming you into the person that you are today? Um, well, I would say in a much more in a more gentle way. Um, I know when I was, you know, taking a training. Uh, one, in fact, well, a couple different people through the Foundation for Shamanic Studies, when I was doing some of my initiatory trainings through through them, um, some of these were um, journeys we took for, um, you know, going back to remembering who you truly are, you know, there's your true essence, and also uh, dismemberment um, journeys. I feel like those are essential, you know, in, in a in anybody's process, you know, of exploring shamanic work, because I feel like for me, they, they truly were, you know, they were back, they were bringing me back to this remembering of who I really am as an energy. I remember having experience of, you know, going back to the star and actually, you know, this and experiencing myself as that kind of energy, you know, that I am this elemental energy that, you know, burst forth. And also, um, you know, I feel that um, this dismemberment experience too helps kind of break the myths that we all have or the beliefs, these old beliefs or maybe some of this old genetic, um, uh, you know, patterning that we have about who we are. This is the kind of information we grow up with about even our ancestors. I feel like that is essential work, and it has been for me to continue to do ancestral work. And I felt that the dismemberment, uh, uh, the first experience I had of that, and then, of course, you know, which can be pretty traumatic for people, even though it's an internal journey and you're experiencing that. It can be, you know, to see yourself being dismembered or dying away, you know, as you, as you sense yourself and then having that experience of remembering who you truly are. I I feel like those were, those were like huge milestones um, in my shamanic practice um, because, you know, those, that imagery, it it was very profound because it was not only the imagery, but I say, I, I literally felt that in my cells. I felt that you know, in every aspect of my being. And so those I felt were really critical. I think uh, that's where I truly 
believe in the work I do too as a shamanic practitioner that having somebody there who has been through these kinds of experiences and they can kind of be the container, hold that space for you to be able to have that depth and level of experience for yourself. You know, I think that's invaluable. Um, and so I felt those have been, you know, and those are very different. Those are kinds of experiences that you said, you know, okay, it's great when you have, you're out there somewhere and things happen to you and you interpret them. But to have intention and say, you know, okay, I, I want something to change in my life. I want to see, you know, a deeper level of truth. And then you go into an experience like a journey or maybe a guided meditation even with somebody. And and you have that kind of experience. I think those, for me, as I know I've had with, other, with um, my clients, those can be life-changing. Um. I was just thinking about several different things that you were saying, and I got distracted there for a minute. Um, I think that it's important to um, c- touch back on something that you said, which was mm-hmm. ho- holding the container for people, because I think yeah. that that is another reason people's sort of organic, I might say, organic initiatory processes don't actually complete themselves and succeed mm-hmm. in that transformational step is that. Mm-hmm. Most people cannot be the transformation that's happening and hold the space so that it can happen. And mm-hmm. this is um, – we, we – I, and I mean this with the greatest compassion, but culturally speaking, we are extremely ignorant about energy. And we don't uh-huh. understand how even to be in our own bodies in a good way, much less with each other in a good way, much less really dealing with these intense um, – altered state experiences or just extreme states that humans are quite capable of going into. And frankly, we need to for a lot of these transformations to happen, like we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And, you know, most people do need someone to hold the space. And yes. sometimes for some things to change, we need more than one person. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and I think that there is an aspect of um, stubbornness and lack of change that occurs when people are unwilling to seek help, number one, Mm -hmm. or there are these other group of people where they're happy to work with a practitioner, but they're Mm -hmm. not willing to do group, I don't do group work, you know, (laughs) I hear that all the time. Yeah. Uh Well, okay, well then there's a certain amount of experience in your life you're not going to have because you're never going to be in a container large enough for it to run its course because you know, we are like a great big chemical reaction. We, 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 we are connected to everything. And so everything's always being dispersed unless we choose, like you said, with intention and consciousness to start to shape something mm-hmm. and hold that space. And most of us need someone to do it for us, even if it's just a trusted friend. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's an important thing. I mean, one of the reasons these initiations occur in training processes is because the the, uh, the quality of the container created by the people in that process, especially if it's a process that's lasting over a number of years. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, that, that is, um, that's an essential point that, you know, community, you need, yeah, whether it's just a friend, as simple as a friend or two, um, or a community that's practicing something you are, you know, I, I think the result can be much greater uh, if there is, you know, community, um, I think that's essential after somebody, you know, if you are just seeing a practitioner one-on-one, yeah, if you can't take it out into the world somehow and share that or, um, you know, or continue to, uh, utilize one another, it's, it's, I think, you, yeah, it's possible that you, you can get pretty stagnant if it's just you and you're just, that's, that's as far as it takes you. Yeah, I, I think- and, and like mm-hmm. you said, it's important also to be able to act on it. I mean, the, yes. the, that's a, a huge piece after the transformation is, is the willingness to live from that place. And mm-hmm. I, I have a very sad story in my history of um, someone who worked with me for 10 years. And, mm-hmm. you know, when push came to shove in life, once life started getting challenging – um, all the training went out the window and everything reverted back to the fear-based process. And so in essence, the initiation didn't work in a sense because the transformation you know, could only be held and acted on in her life when everything was fine. But as soon as the, you know, the water started to boil, 
<laughs> as it always yeah. does in life, you know, <laughs> you know, everything yeah. just regressed back to that older belief. And so what that showed me is that ultimately the paradigm hadn't shifted. The old paradigm was still firmly in place and the other yeah. one is, was just sort of an overlay. And that's one of the things that I do see in people's lives is, is mm-hmm. everything's fine until it isn't fine anymore. And then all of a sudden all that good new stuff everybody's learned goes out the window and they go right back to how they acted, you know, when they were traumatized as children. And, you know, so, you know, yeah. so what do we need then to understand about initiation, which is, you know, the point of the whole mm-hmm whole series here. So I was wondering, you have traveled so much in so many different places. Is there a particular experience you had in your travels that, that in, in reflection now you realize was a powerful transforming initiatory experience? Uh, let's see, just through traveling. Well, um, well, you know, again, I feel, I know several of my trips to South America, um, uh, using a plant medicines, of course, you know, is an incredible initiatory experience. I don't know if that's what you were thinking, but, um, well, not necessarily, but that's a good one. Share that story. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you know, and this is still unfolding. It's interesting. Cause I know somebody asked me recently about if I had ever experienced ayahuasca and I have, I've had, um, quite a few, um, opportunities to experience that in uh, both Peru and Ecuador. And I, you know, I almost didn't have the words, you know, it was such a profound experience that um, I feel like, you know, it's very hard to find words to describe uh, what I actually, um, you know, gained from it other than, you know, I could give somebody, I could tell you some of the things I saw and the symbology of that to me. But, um, I feel like, again, the reason that was, well, what I've come to now, let me say from that is that, um, you know, working with somebody who has a deep um, respect for this medicine that they're working with is essential. That's what I found because I have through the years experienced people, you know, all over the U.S. are using it now and experiencing creating ceremony and that. But if, um, if the person that's overseeing you know this experience is again it doesn't have you know it can't really be the container for you isn't it hold, able to hold this kind of space or sacredness with what you're doing I, I think you're kind of missing the whole point of using it in the first place and what I discovered through the native shamans that I was with was that you know it's not even like I know in our culture we tend to often think that it's like the quant the quantity, you know, it's like we want the biggest bang for our buck. And the truth is, you know, it doesn't take much. It's really about the quality of this connection that we have, say, and for this example, is through a plant and the wisdom of this plant medicine that we take in. I feel like then, you know, often the shamans would say, you know, once they've had their initiations and they've worked with the plant medicine, what you have to do then is nurture the relationship that you have with it. You could keep taking it and taking it and taking it, but that really doesn't necessarily um, mean that you're going to continue to have expanded or deeper experiences. In fact, sometimes, you know, often with any kind of abuse of any kind of substance, you know, you can go downhill really fast. You can go in the opposite direction. So, again, the whole point of the experience and that I felt like, you know, with the plant medicine, I'm learning even today is that, you know, it was it was one step, you know, it was the initiation of having that integrated into my physical essence. It expanded my consciousness. And then it's still up to me to continue to nurture the relationship that I have with that, you know, that information that I receive with the plant itself and to keep deepening what that means to me now, you know, um, you know, that is still my responsibility, you know, to, continue to deepen my understanding if I want to reap some of the benefits of that. And I can, you know, because it's now it's a part of me and I have to keep going back. But, you know, I have to take that action to consciously almost like re-trigger that within myself, you know, reignite that within myself. Otherwise, it could just sit there, you know, latent for the rest of my life. But I think, you know, taking action, making conscious steps to create ceremony, 
that helped me remember what that was about in my life. Um, you know, that, that's up to me. That's, that's the action part that I have to take. Um, and so, you know, I think that's one way, you know, using plant medicines, but also, you know, I know I've had a similar experience through just fasting and doing yoga and exploring my diet, you know, in different ways, you know, we can, um, spark those kinds of experiences, I think from, you know, with that, with what we bring into our bodies. It's kind of funny you mentioned that because I was just listening to you and, and thinking about kind of where to go next. But um, I, I, one of the reasons that I invited you today is because I know you to be a very eclectic practitioner who is effective because many mm-hmm. eclectic practitioners I meet aren't really very effective <laughs> because it, there's yes. Yes. not a lot of depth. There's a lot of breadth, but not a lot of depth. Mm-hmm. And they can pretty much, you know, on the surface do anything for anybody, but there, there's not a lot of depth there. And that's not true in your case that you, you are mm-hmm. both eclectic and effective. And, mm-hmm. and you know, I was thinking about that as you were talking about how you experienced your relationship with the plant medicines. And, and, and I, I was just kind of wondering, because you might feel differently about this than I do, but as I've been thinking about initiations, I've also thought about, you know, all the time and effort that I have spent to go to amazing places and work with, you know, Mm -hmm. amazing practitioners. So I'm not criticizing the Mm -hmm. people or the cultures at all, Mm -hmm. but I also find, as I reflect now, somewhat more mature practitioner perhaps, that what my own helping spirits do with me is almost always more powerful. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because yes, they're the ones absolutely. I have the deepest relationship with. Yeah, I think that's funny. Um, I, I, I felt very similar, you know, at different times and reflecting. And that's why it's even kind of funny when people ask me, you know, about an experience or, you know, they want to know, you hear a story. And I think, well, <laughs> okay, it's fun to tell the story. And, of course, it was a fabulous experience at the time. But it's like what you do with that after that really counts, right? Uh, and, it, and it's like how do I take this in then? You know, it was kind of, it was the spark. You know, it was what um, fed that passion within me. It's like you still have to have that passion within you. And I feel like, you know, I, and that is unusual. Um, thank you for recognizing about, about me. I mean, I think I am a very spontaneous and, you know, I can be very eclectic, but I believe it's in the way that, is more about embracing, you know, rather than just, you know, taking in a lot of information, you know, that's all great and having tons of experiences. But if you, if you truly, I mean, I, for myself, I say, okay, am I truly, um, you know, is it, is this moving me closer towards the belief or the truth that I have about that? You know, if everything is energy, if I am spirit, if I truly want to get to know that part of myself and share that part of my, purpose being here is to, you know, share that with others, um, and help spark that in them. Um, you know, I think that's the difference because then you still have to bring it down to earth, right? It's like, kind of like chop wood, carry water. (laughs) Yep, exactly. (laughs) You you can have all this great stuff, but then if you still can't, if you cannot function on the level of like, how does this help me chop wood and carry water? You know, when the going gets rough or when it's just the day to day, Mm -hmm. la di da, Mm-hmm. Um, it's worthless, you know, if, yeah. if you're still going to trudge around. Or like you said, if I'm going to go back into the old pattern and just look at these experiences in my life, just like, oh, my God, you know, the, just the way they were and feel like I'm trapped or be in my fear, um, all that experience was for naught. You know, it has to be that, hey, I have to actually utilize some of this information. I really got to do something with it. So I feel like in that way I – truly feel that, you know, part of my personal practice is just like always bringing it back down to earth. You know, I can go out there and expand, but I've got to come back. I think, and you said this beautifully at some point about, I think you're uh, a practice that you have, you know, with, um, and is it a Buddhist practice? I'm not sure, but you know, it's just kind of like the yin and the yang, you know, <laughs> you have to learn how to, to do the dance, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you can expand, you can go out there and get all, you know, as far as you want and, and life can be great. But then it's like, okay, what happens when the kids are screaming and, you know, they need lunch or you got to be washing the <laughs> dirty clothes? You know, can you make that a spiritual experience? Can you make that? Um, can you see that in the light that, that, you know, says, oh, this is actually an act of honoring. Can, can you do it consciously? 
you know, yeah. do it with gratitude um, for, hey, the gift that we even have water. You know, you have a washing machine. There are people on the planet that will never have, you know, a refrigerator or a washing machine. Right. Um, you know, and we don't, we forget how gifted we are, how blessed we are, uh, you know, because we're going for, you know, more and more. And really it's about, how can I take this, you know, all that is possible, all that I could have and, and bring it back down into, you know, this very humble, um, essential, you know, how can I bring it back down to that essential part of myself and, and then reflect it back out to make it, you know, to create harmony. Um, and so it, it really seems like for you, as I've been listening, it, it, it does all come back to the relation, the quality of the relationships with the experience. And then you're just speaking now about the quality of your relationship with yourself. And then ultimately yeah. from that, the quality of your relationship with the world, with the kind of why are you here question. Yeah, absolutely. Because if um, th- I think that's in a nutshell, it, it still it all boils down back to the relationship. How do you want to be in relationship with what, who and what surrounds you? Mm-hmm. You know, because how do you want to be treated? How do you want to experience the world? Right. You know, and in that way, you know, hopefully you will be influenced to, you know, in this kind of action that you're taking, you'll be more conscious with how you're choosing to be in the world. So I think we should leave listeners with that question. How do you want to be <laughs> treated? <in the> world? <laughs> <laughs> and, and can you bring that? Can, can you mm-hmm. bring that to the day? So mm-hmm. Desiree, thank you so much for being with us here today. And, um, mm-hmm. Blessings on your move. Having just moved myself, I, I will oh. pray for you every day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, Christina. I, and I just want to say again, it, is, it was such a gift to reconnect with you. And I'm so happy that you're doing this show. I feel like it is such a, such a gift. Well, thank um, you. Yeah. And I feel truly blessed to have met you and have you in my life. I know this will go out into the world and fulfill all those beautiful intentions you had at opening the show, too. I, I really, um, you have a beautiful heart, and uh, it was just a great honor to be here with you today. Well, thank you. And for those of you who want to connect with Desiree now after listening to her today, remember that she is at Desiree DeMars at Yahoo.com. So D E S I R E E D E M A R S at Yahoo.com. Um, mm-hmm. And since, uh, since you're going to be moving, that's probably the best thing to leave people with. So yeah. thank you again. Thanks to all of your helping spirits and the snakes and the scorpions and <laughs> all the things that have made you the practitioner that you are today. I give thanks to the ancestors for being with us here today mm-hmm. and helping us to relearn what they knew. Um, mm-hmm. None of the most important teachings are ever lost. They just, um, they're never gone. They're just lost for the moment and we'll find them again in this way together. We give thanks to the earth below and the sky above and the heart that unites us all. Um, next week, our guest will be Michael Dunning, and he is going to share his amazing story of a 10-year initiation underneath a single tree, a yew tree, an enormous many thousand-year-old yew tree in Scotland, and what that did for him and how that has shaped his practice, um, which he calls yew shamanism, which you can all Google and, and uh, bone up for the for the show next week. So again, Desiree, thank you. And thank you all for listening. Thank those of you that have donated to support the show and may you all have a really great week. Thank you.